everyone. Welcome here to worship for St. Mary's Lutheran Church, Silver Run. It is Sunday, January 17th, the second Sunday after Epiphany. And as um, we begin today, uh, I just want to make a couple of announcements. First, probably most importantly, um, beginning next Sunday, we will be in church at 930 for service. Again, social distancing and masks are required, um, but we will uh, be going to try that again, unless there's another spike, God willing, and the creek don't rise. Um, the other thing that, and, and we will be continuing to pass the word uh, to those who do not have social media, but if you speak to anyone, just um, let them know. Second of all, we continue to need people for um, counsel and I will be calling around. We cannot do any business of the church without uh, the council filled. So please know that this is uh, very, very important. Um, the food pantry is going to be open uh, this Wednesday for those who are in need. Uh, and I believe we will be there for that. Um, this has been a week of uh, people sharing illness prayers, and so we are praying today for uh, Jim's sister who had surgery. Um, we are also continuing to pray for Robert uh, who came home, and we are continuing to pray for um, those who have uh, special needs, either COVID-related or chronic pain or just a... Um, mental health need. Mental health is very, very important right now. Uh, quarantine produces a lot of depression uh, and a lot of anger. So please, if you need mental health resources, uh, let me know that also. Um, coming up and coming forward, uh, we will be having uh, the Ash Wednesday service at noontime. Um, and for those who cannot be there at noontime, perhaps we'll do ashes to go outside at seven, but uh, the main service will be at noontime and we will be even social distancing with, uh, with that. So um, just please be aware that some changes will be made. Our numbers are still high, especially in the 21158 area. So we are going to be extremely cautious even as we meet. So I thank you for your um, patience with all of that and uh, let us take a moment then and prepare our hearts for worship. Jesus said, come and see today. Let us do just that. The God who breathed this world alive and sustains it day by day, whose hand flung stars into space and controls our destiny, says, do not be afraid for I am with you. The God who filled the ocean depths and sent their tides on their way, who caused mountains to be raised up and rainbows to display, says, I have called you by name you are mine. The God who made the fertile earth and seed within it to sow, whose artistry creates butterflies, in the early morning dew says, you are precious in my sight. <clears throat> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out to all people, and whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sins, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward 
failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all that we have done and for all that we have left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them and receive them in your divine mercy. Lord, have mercy. How vast is God's grace through power and the promise of Jesus Christ our sins are forgiven and washed away, and we are claimed as Christ's beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. Now in the wake of God's forgiveness, we are all called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. From the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world and for the well-being of the Church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious God. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of the Father. Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. Lord God, Lamb of God, you, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray our prayer of the day. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, most merciful Redeemer, for countless blessings and benefits that you give. May we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, follow you more nearly, day by day, praising you with the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Some of you will remember that line from God's spell. Our first reading today is from 1 Samuel, 3rd chapter, verses 1 through 20. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. Now the word of the Lord was rare in those days and vision were not widespread. At that time Eli, whose sight has begun to grow dim so he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Here I am. Ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Go lie down again. So Samuel went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. <clears throat> but Eli said, I did not call my son. Go lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and he went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. 
and then Eli perceived that it was the Lord calling the boy. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, go lie down, and if he calls you again, you shall say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. <clears throat> Now Samuel came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will, both, <clears throat> that will make both ears of anyone who hears it tingle. On that day, <clears throat> I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew because his sons were blaspheming God and he did not restrain them. Therefore, I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by the sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there till morning then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli, but Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. And Samuel said, here I am. Eli said, what was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also, if you hide anything from me that he has told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. And as Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Our psalm today is Psalm 139 verses 1 through 18 and let's read it together. You have searched me Lord and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down, and you are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in from behind and before. You lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go to the heavens, you are there. And if I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me, and the light become light around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you, and the night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb, and I will praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that fully well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret places. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I am awake, I am still with you. Our second reading today is from Corinthians, or 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 12 through 20. 
All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach, and the stomach for food. And God will destroy both one and the other. The body is not meant for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. God raised the Lord, and will also raise us by, power, by his power. Do you not know that your body is a members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is said that the two shall become one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication and every sin that a person commits that is outside the body. But the temple prostitute and fornicator sin against the body itself. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that it is not your own, for you are brought together with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to John, beginning in the first chapter, verses 34, excuse me, 43 through 51. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. And Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph, Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. When Joseph saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said of him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see even greater things than these. And he said to him, very truly I tell you, you will see the heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. You know, there is one thing that I am very sorry and regretful about um, from when my children were little. And that was that sometimes when they came to me as children do, and they've got something that they have done or something that's very interesting, and they would come to me and they say, come on, come here, come see this, come and see. And my answer sometimes would be, I'm sorry. I'm too busy. Now, sometimes you just can't come, okay? Your hands are sort of up to your elbows, you know, in cooking dinner or in taking care of another child. Um, and I'm not talking about those situations or you've got a call on the line from your boss. I'm not talking about that. But I'm talking about the times when we could put down something we were doing and going. You know, things like you see these commercials on TV where the kids are looking for their mom and the husband is saying, no, don't disturb her. And she's sitting in a bathtub eating chocolates. Yeah, we have to take care of ourselves. But there are times when we can say, hey, look, I'll be right there. Okay, um, I hear you, I know you want me. And then you get up from what you're doing and get yourself prepared and go to see that. The problem is that we've got a lot of idols in our life and those idols 
sometimes stop us from coming and seeing the important things, whether they're something our children create, whether they are something that our neighbor uh, needs us for, or whether it's just God saying, hey, look, I have something for you to come and see. Maybe our neighbor's saying, oh man, you got to come and you got to listen to this song, this hymn, or you got to see this Bible passage. Doesn't take long to find the idols of these days. You know, I can probably ask you <clears throat> things that will come to your mind. <coughs> Excuse me, things that will come to your mind immediately. Paul talks about food. How many of us can say that food is not exactly our idol? I mean, there are thousands of websites dedicated to food, and we have a new word called foodie, which is somebody who is so into food that it is really, truly an idol. Even Carroll County has a Facebook page called Carroll County Eats. I mean, food is certainly an idol. Another thing is sports. I mean, heaven's sakes. It doesn't take much to look at football, which has taken over our Sunday mornings, and not just the NFL, but also our kids' sports. I remember being back when Carroll County still did not have sports on Sunday mornings. And we were, we did have the kids there, but oh my gosh, when the Mavens were playing at summer at McDaniel College, it changed. It changed Westminster, not for the good. You know, there are other idols, video games. If you haven't, if your kids doesn't play a video game, you're lucky because most of them nowadays play a video game or cell phones or taking selfies. Uh, just the idea of internet influencers. Oh my gosh, that's setting yourself up as an idol in some particular way. <clears throat> Those are things that are obvious as idols, but some things aren't as obvious. For example, one of the idols that I see now, and I see it in the church, is that politics and our opinions and our agenda have become an idol. We are more concerned about that. And so that takes over our preaching. That takes over our time and what we do. Our hobbies, our causes can become an idol. Sometimes even church, not God, not spirituality, not prayer, but our theology, our beliefs can become an idol. Paul reminds us that not all things are good for us. We can do all things, but not all things are good for us. And that there are times when we need to re-examine ourselves and we shouldn't do some things. Now, Paul is talking about the temple prostitutes. Remember that the Cor Corinthians were in Greece and they, a lot of them, had converted out of the Greek mythology we know. And part of that was was sexuality was part of their worship, part of the temple practices. And he's honing in on that. And he's trying to convince them that in Christianity, the sacrifices you make are not something you do with somebody else in the temple. The sacrifices that you make are a heart that belongs to God, not to anything else. And it's important for us to remember that in this coming week, because a lot of people, their idols, their thing that consumes their life is out there and it's taking over. It's affecting our relationship with God. And it's gonna come to a highlight this week. It's already coming to highlight. We saw what happened last week. And now we've got the conservative churches blaming the liberal churches and, and, and uh, saying that they're going to do damage to them as well as to the cab. I mean, people are talking a lot. And frankly, I don't say this to make us fear. We're not in a place of that. The bishop got online to reassure us that the talk that's going on right now is just talk. Sometimes talk can become an idol. Instead, instead of following these idols, there is nothing more important then listening instead of talking and hearing the word of God. Those idols sometimes speak so loud that it shuts down God's ability to talk to us. You know, in the first Samuel, they said that 
not many people had prophesied and that visions were rare in the land. Do you know that it was very common in the Old Testament and in the New Testament to have groups of people have the same exact vision? It's very rare. I was in one church and we went to the Alpha Course and when we were there, there was a time when we had a chance to pray and we had a chance to experience the Holy Spirit. And several things came out of that prayer time. You could see the power. And, and the prayer that the uh, pastor gave was very, very simple. Heavenly Father, send down your Holy Spirit to reach us. Very simple. And yet it was like a feeling of power. You could see from the first row onwards, it was like water spreading out and people were affected. You could see them waver. You could see people's heads raise up. You could see people sit down. You could see people react the way that God wanted to. And the group of six of us who were there, for the first time in my experience as a pastor, we had a common vision. Because when it was done, we had a chance to share. And one of the groups said, I had a vision of this. The next person said, I had that vision too. And after we shared and realized we had a common vision, we knew for the first time we had heard the voice of God. And it was something then to be obeyed. If God calls you again, you are to say, speak, Lord, your servant hears. And then do what God asks you to do. This is what we need in the church as we begin to prepare for the church to reopen. And I don't mean just for the church to open its doors to worship. That's one thing. But reality is that COVID has affected us and has affected this world in many ways. And the church that is going to come back in, the Christian church that is going to be there, that needs to reach out and share hope and grace and love is going to have to renew itself. People who have gone through this are not ready to walk in our doors. People who've gone through this don't know what they trust anymore. People's faith has been shaken in this. And we can't assume that during this time, people have stayed the same. They haven't. So we're going to have to find new ways to speak the gospel and to bring them in. We're going to have to find <clears throat> new ways, excuse me, to share the love of God. <clears throat> we're going to have to <clears throat> find new ways to care for people who've been affected by this, either physically, mentally, economically, spiritually. And before we can do that, we're going to have to renew ourselves. We're going to have to spend this time coming up to get rid of the idols that take us away from God in the church and spend some time remembering that God comes first and then God provides for us so that we can enjoy our life. But God has to be that first. You know, a friend of mine said, you know what? God works from the top down, not the bottom up. God doesn't wait for us to tell God who he is. God doesn't wait for us to tell God what kind of worship he wants from us. God doesn't wait for us to tell God what kind of prayer we're going to give him. God has already given us the answers to that, and he's given us the witness in his son, Jesus Christ. Then God says to us, go and do this. Or God says, come and see. Just like, just like the New Testament, or just like the early church, our job is going to be to go back there, find what worked. How did they share the good news of Jesus Christ and the miracles that they did, the power of God in a society that was very much like what we face today. How did they do that? They did it because they were first willing to go and see, to go and listen, to hear the voice of God and to be open. Heavenly Father, 
as we go through this week. Help us to remember the words of Psalm 139. Help us to say it every single day and find you in those words. Let it be our guard and our guide so that we can put aside the things of this earth and understand that you know us and you guide us from the smallest atom in our bodies to the furthest distances from you can we can go, that you still have a purpose, a power, and a presence in us and for us. And may the Holy Spirit help us to put aside the idols that this week will distract us to know it. And instead, instead of the idols of anger and the idols of hate and the idols of judgmentalness, may your church be a beacon of light and life. No fear, Lord, no fear, because you are our heavenly home, our guard and our guide. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now, remembering what God has done for us, let us say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his Son, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into the heavens and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Guided by Christ and made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the body of Christ gathered throughout the world and for all the servants of the gospel, that following Jesus, the church may live out its calling every day, let us pray. Have mercy, O God for the well-being of creation, for plants and animals, for all that God has marvelously made, that we may serve as wide, worldwide stewards of the earth, our home. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For police officers and firefighters, for attorneys and paralegals, for peacekeeper and military personnel, for the leaders of governments, <clears throat> that they may provide protection for all people, especially to those most vulnerable. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For those lacking food and shelter, for those who are sick or grieving, for those who are imprisoned or homebound, especially this week for all of our shut-ins, that God may console all those who suffer. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For our neighborhood, for those joining us online, those preparing to join us back in church next Sunday, for those who are absent from our community, those who have become homebound since our last service together, let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For President-elect Joe Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris, and for all those who will take political office this Wednesday and this month, we ask wisdom and empathy for those they serve. We pray that you protect us with a smooth transition of power. And may this not be about personalities or parties, but about the good of the whole nation and the world. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For President and Mrs. Trump, for their family, for protection, for rest, for clarity, for peace, let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. 
in thanksgiving for all those who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, in thanksgiving for all those who have found time with families, for all those who are able to go when their children say, come and see and give them praise, in thanksgiving for the good things of this life, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. And in thanksgiving for all the saints who have gone before us, especially Antony and Pachomius, renewers of the church, that their lives give us a vision of the gospel in action as we go forward. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people spoken or silent. For the sake of the one who dwells among us, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us this good land for our heritage, assist us that we may always prove ourselves a peaceful, peace, people mindful of your favor and be glad to do your will. Bless our land with honorable industry, sound learning, and pure manners. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, from all other idols and from every evil, evil way. Defend our liberties and fashion into one united people the multitudes brought here out of many kindreds and tongues. Endue with a spirit of wisdom those to whom in your name we entrust the authority of government that there may be justice and peace at home, and that through obedience to your law, we may show forth your praise among the nations of the earth. In the time of prosperity, fill our hearts with thankfulness, and in the day of trouble, give us grace that our trust in you will not fail. All which we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, whose blessed Son came not to be served, but to serve. Bless all who, following in his steps, give themselves to the service of others, that with wisdom, patience, and courage, they may minister in his name to the suffering and the friendless, to the needy. Especially, we pray for our food pantry and for shepherd staff, <clears throat> for all of the agencies in Westminster, and the churches overburdened by need. For the love of him who laid down his life for us, your son, our savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now, forever and ever, amen. Almighty God, whose son, our savior, is the light of the world, grant that your people, illumined by your word and grace, may shine forth with the radiance of Christ's glory that he may be known, worshiped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us summarize all of our prayers into the one that our Lord Jesus Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. May God whose son Jesus Christ was born to save us. Open our eyes to follow the light of his star and open your hearts to sing with the angels and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Go into the world blessed by the grace of baptism to live as Christ's disciples. Thanks be to God. Thank you all for joining me this week. And again, next week, 
Uh, we will be in church at 930 for worship. I will also continue to have a worship here online for those who cannot or do not feel comfortable for coming in. Uh, and again, we will do ashes on Ash Wednesday, both inside and outside, so that uh, those who wish might come and receive them uh, in as safe a place as they deem. Okay. Uh, may your work be or your week be safe. May your work, week be filled with the love and grace of God, and may hope abound. And as the song says, may we see. God more clearly, love him more dearly, and follow him more nearly day by day. Amen.